Good morning. Good morning. My, my name is Ned Garn. I'm the moderator here at Rincon Church. And <clears throat> my pronoun, pronouns, I, my language is English, and my pronouns <laughs> are he and him. Um, for those of you who have not been here before, just so that you know, if you don't want to be uh, seen online as part of our, uh, our presence online, the outside seating on the left and right is available to you to worship here in anonymity, should you choose to do that. I'd like to welcome any first-time visitors. Is there anybody here who's, who's here for the first time or has uh, relatively new and hasn't introduced themselves before? We'd like to hear from you and get to know you. Anybody for the first time? If you would wait for the microphone, that would be great. Yep, the here comes the microphone. Hi, I'm Tay. Pronouns are she, they. Um, here with my wife, our kids. Uh, his name is Luke, and we have baby Maggie here. Hi. Go ahead, uh, you can say something too. <laughs> I, um, Iris. Hi. Uh, she, her. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for having us. And is there anybody else electing over here in the middle, Chris? And my name is Connie, and I'm here for the first time. My neighbor brought Great. me in. Great. Neighbor brought me in. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you with us, Connie. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. <clears throat> Uh, each week we do a land acknowledgement. We take this moment to focus on the fact that we worship, pray, sing, and gather together on land that was taken with the complicity of empire and religion, including ours. And we honor those uh, ancestors to the, the Tohono O'odham, the Paschayaki, and their descendants, and we strive to develop relationship and communion with those descendants. I'm going to read the announcements that I've been given. Uh, before I do that, I'll just remind you that there are additional announcements that are in your bulletin, so make sure you remember to check on that. All right. Um, the closet at Rincon Community, uh, Rincon Clothing Exchange on February 28th, there's going to be a Zoom at both 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. See Chris Lynn after the service there in the back. Chris, give a wave. See Chris Lynn after the service, or you can email rinconcommunityexchange at gmail.com for uh, information on that Zoom, those two Zoom sessions. <clears throat> uh, Creation Care is doing a book club using the book Hidden Waters by Charles Bowden. See Kathy Padilla, who has copies of the books. I don't know how many copies she has, but copies. And also, I've been asked to remind you that if you bring your compost in and leave it out front, please make sure that you use an ordinary compost uh, bag rather than just a plastic bag. Because what happens then, if you bring it in a plastic bag, somebody has to dump the quote unquote crap out of that one <laughs> into a compost bag that can be used. So it would be uh, a lot more convenient for those folks who are helping us out with that to bring it in in a compost bag. And I, do we have some of those available? Or there, there should be some back there in the narthex if, if you need to uh, access some of those. All right, and that's all the announcements. Well, that didn't take quite as long as I expected it to, so. All right. Kids, if you would join me up here, we're gonna have a moment together. Once I get my technology together. See, if you were doing this, it would be so easy, but I'm doing it. That's good right there, that's good. You know, if you want to, 
or wherever you want. I'm going to stand down here. I'm going to stand down here so I can look at you. So any place you want to be up there, you can take my seat, you can take my job, whatever you want. God bless you. That's your future pastor. When I retire in 50 years. Um, so this, where we all are here, it's called a chancel. There's the choir loft up there. Can you see the choir loft up there? Yeah. Yep. That's the choir loft where singers might sing or the band might play music as a form of prayer. This is the pulpit. This is where I or someone else might offer words of prayer. That makes sense so far? Good. This is the communion table where we pray with Jesus and the community. And now comes the fun part. Turn around that way. Back there, that's the cross. It's large and tall, and it reaches out its arms. Can you reach out your arms like the cross? Very good, very good. It's large enough to, for people to see it from all the way in the back. Is that true? Can you all see it from the back? Yes. Okay, good. That's very good. Can you tell me what it's made of? Yeah. It is made of wood, which means that it was once a tree. Hmm. The cross has one pole that goes up and down. One end heads toward the ground and the other to high above and beyond. This connects a praying person to God. We remember Jesus when we look at this part of the cross. The other pole points side to side. Right, just reach your arms out again. Side to side, very good. Reaching out from the center like arms that reach out to include everyone in our prayers. It's like a big group hug. A prayer is a group hug. Today, I want to pray with you and for you. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. I like consensual prayer. All right, so if you want to gather here for a moment, let's pray together. And I'm going to actually include those of you that aren't up here. Okay. If you want to, you can bow your heads and close your eyes. If you don't want to, you don't have to. God, thank you for being here with us, above, below, and all around us. Thank you for wrapping us up in love and giving us hugs when we feel down. Thank you for sending Jesus to teach us lessons on how to live with love. At the end of a prayer, we usually say, amen. Can you say amen with me? Amen. Well done. So now I'm going to address your church family here by saying, God loves you. And so do we. Did you hear that? They love you. You want to give them a hand for saying they love you? You want to love them back? Okay. You're free. Thank you. Well done. You are free now to go have fun with your squishy animals. All right. Please rise if you're willing and able. And we'll join me in the call to worship. It's on your screen as well as in the bulletin. This season of Lent may... <clears throat> this season of Lent may mean when we prayerfully give up something that we enjoy as a way of acknowledging Jesus' sacrifice in the desert. We fast to acknowledge, pray, and journey with Jesus. But what do we learn from this? Is it the suffering or the longing that's the lesson? Is it looking at the things that are hard for us to sacrifice? We imagine the suffering of Jesus' death. We are not told that Jesus suffered. We are not told that Jesus was miserable. We are told that Jesus was tempted and ministered to by angels. Let's decenter suffering and recenter addressing our temptations. Let's, Let's pray for God's, God's angels to minister to our hearts, bodies, and minds. Let's, like Jesus, spend time wrestling with ourselves in preparation for what God has called us to do. Yep, please join me in singing Sanctuary together.
In our contemporary voice today, love takes off the masks we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. James Baldwin. Scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from, the, from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, I was going to sing Rock of My Soul in the Bosom of Abraham. Sorry, I'm Sean. And I will be walking up there. But there's this thing on my foot called a cast. So it takes a little while. The week has been quite a trial for me. And every morning, I would wake up to a different song in my heart. So, you're gonna get that one. Amen, amen. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like an ocean. I've got joy like an ocean. I've got joy like an ocean in my soul. Oh, I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like an ocean, I've got joy like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like a fountain, I've got love like a fountain, I've got love like a fountain in my soul. Oh, I've got love like a fountain. I've got love like a fountain. I've got love like a fountain in my soul. How about we sing the first verse again? Yes. Peace like a river. Let's do it. All of you. Yes. I've got 
peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Oh, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sean. You know, in the church that I grew up in, they used to say that the bulletin or order of worship gives us guidance when the Holy Spirit doesn't show up to take control. Sometimes the thing you have planned is not the thing that God wishes you to do in that service. So thank you for saying yes to the move of the Spirit. Greetings, beloved of God. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please pray with me. Gracious and wonderful God, you are like the cross reaching high and low and wide enough for all of us to fit into your embrace. We thank you for our daily bread. We thank you for our daily breath. We ask your mercy, healing, and guidance. Give us courage, direction, and resource to go where you send us and to do what you've called us to do. We ask you, God, to pour your spirit out on our thirsty souls. Rain on the dry places in our lives. Saturate the seeds planted by our ancestors of faith that we may grow and be fruitful to your creation in need. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, God. We submit ourselves today to your calling on our lives. Amen. So if you've been in churches for a while, you have heard this passage annually or semi-annually. How many of you have heard this particular passage of scripture before? Okay. These, the 40 days that we call Lent are based on this passage. Lent is the Christian season of spiritual preparation before Easter, starting on Ash Wednesday and lasting for 40 days, excluding Sundays. It's a time for us to dedicate ourselves to reflection, to self-examination, as a way of drawing closer to God. It is said to mirror the 40-day fast of Jesus in the wilderness. And though the fast is not noted in Mark, it is noted in both Matthew and Luke. I'm not sure why the writer of Mark decided to leave that out. They didn't tell us why that happened. This is a time that's often set aside for self-denial, represented by fasting and repentance and often represented by committing more time to prayer and to Bible reading. Those who desire to connect the Hebrew scriptures to the writings of the New Testament will also say there's a correspondence between the 40 years of wilderness wanderings by the Israelites. They connect that to the 40 days of the fasting of Jesus. Nonetheless, this time is intended to prepare us for the coming of Easter. By praying, fasting, doing acts of charity, we seek to grow in spirit and to grow closer to God. Here is where I'm gonna complicate things because so far it's been pretty formulaic and if you know anything about me, that's not my way. In spite of our tendency and desire to move from fasting and praying and self-sacrifice right on through to resurrection, Doing so abbreviates the story. It leaves out the unpleasant parts that we don't want to deal with. It turns a mini-series into an episode. We don't usually like the ugly parts. We like to move from Ash Wednesday right to Easter, as often as we can, and as painlessly as we can. We don't want to take the journey of being betrayed, by people close to us. We don't want to talk about the degradation of that lynching. We don't want to talk about the complicity of empire and religious elders because that's too close to home. 
That's why we, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I saw the, um, I saw the movie Origin yesterday, so I might be in a, I might be in a way right now. I, 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 that movie has me all in my feelings. And if you have not yet seen it, I encourage you to see it. Um, and I'm not usually doing commercials for movies, but even if you don't see it, if you've not read the book Cast by Isabel Wilkinson, I encourage you to read it. The book, uh, the movie is based on the life of Isabel Wilkinson while writing that book. It talks about ugly, hard things. This journey to Easter, we love Easter. Little bunnies and eggs and lilies and stuff. You know the stuff, the feel good stuff. We like looking at an empty cross. We don't like looking at the cross with Jesus on it. Bloody, beaten, and if you've ever had the misfortune of seeing someone expire, there was probably urine and excrement involved because that's what happens when the body lets go. It doesn't look pretty, doesn't smell pretty, doesn't feel pretty, none of those things. I understand why we want to move right past it, but we cannot. When we move past the ugliness of life, we also move past the people experiencing that ugliness. I want you to hear me now because this is important. This is important to us as a church that likes to claim welcome. Everybody that shows up our doors is not going to be cleaned up when they get here. They might smell like a lynching. They might look like what they've been through. It is still our job to open our arms wide like the cross and embrace them with their consent. I was talking with a pastor friend of mine on Friday, and they were talking about how at their church they have encampments of people who are without shelter. And when they took the job as the pastor there, the demographic of their church is much like ours, um, only it's in Minnesota or somewhere up there where I don't understand the geography of it up there. Um, when they took the position, the people at the church would say, well, you know, be careful. There are homeless people out there. And she said to them, uh-huh. And, and, and they said to her, well, there's this one guy who's always coming up to us asking for things. And she said, oh, you mean David? Yeah, I invited him in. I gave him some pastries and some coffee and invited him to worship with us. They were amazed. Like, you know his name? Yes, I know his name. He's a person. He is not just a part of the population of homelessness who happen to be camping on our campus. He has no threat to us. We are more of a threat to him. I tell you that story because I want us to look at ourselves and how we move in the world, how we move on our campus. When we see someone who is unsheltered, who is using our hose to take a shower or setting up a tent somewhere, do we go and greet them? Ask if they need anything? Yes, we ask them to not make use of our campus in that way because that's how we operate. We aren't setting that up right now. But that person has a name and a history. Amen? They're a whole person just like us. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands because that might be embarrassing for you. But I want to share with you that I spent a great many years being unsheltered. I was that person. I was that person you called the police on for going to the bathroom on your porch, for leaving bags in places where bags didn't need to be, for using your water hose to clean up or have a drink of water. I had no idea that that person could become this person. I wouldn't have believed it if you told me. I would have called you a liar right to your face. And I say that to you not to extol my own virtues, but to say to you that you have no idea what God can make of that person. And your job is not to figure that out. Your job is to open your heart, to open your arms, 
and to open your mouth and be the love of Jesus in that moment. If you do nothing else during this time of Lent, reach. Reach. Reach out to the person on the island that you pass at the intersection who you try to look away from because you don't have a dollar to give them or you, you're sure they're going to use that dollar for drugs. So maybe the drugs is the thing that's keeping them from suicide. I know it was for me. If I could just get high enough to forget what my life looked like, maybe I could live one more day. And that worked until something better came along. Give them a dollar without judging what they're going to use it for. If you don't feel comfortable with that, keep yourself a stack of gift cards in your car. Not for the crappy place where you wouldn't take your family to eat, but where you eat. Do they not deserve a life as full as yours? I am saying this because as we look past the ugliness of the cross, we also look past the ugliness all around us. We have an obligation to look directly at the ugliness of the cross and the ugliness right in front of us, not to, get, not to say to ourselves, we feel really bad and guilty. This is terrible. Look at how people are treated. People are treated really poorly. But I'm going to submit to you that for the people that are treated poorly, they are ignored 10 times more than they are treated poorly by us. Those who claim to be the hands and hearts of Christ. I hope I'm making you uncomfortable. That is my intention. Maybe you didn't come to church to be uncomfortable, but you might have got the wrong preacher for that. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the text for just a brief moment. Because in this temptation of Jesus, the tempter used... Two things to woo Jesus away from his faith. He used fulfillment and authority. Think about it. Being full, food, and having enough. Being able to control your environment because you have power. I'll simplify that to say... The tempter offered Jesus money and power, access and resource and agency. These are the things that were used as a temptation. I find it very sad that these are also the things that empires offer as temptation and that churches offer as temptation. Amen. I know it's, uh, it's so easy to say, God, the government, ah, ah, shake your head, suck your teeth, roll your eyes. But around the world and here in this country and its territories, the government, the empire, and religion are still interwoven just like they were in the days of Jesus. And there are people who are in religious authority and power who have aligned themselves with the empire to do harm to people. As much as we want to say, not us, we are still complicit. It's kind of like racism. We're all entrenched in it. That is a part of our national fabric. We breathe it in with every breath. You can work on being anti-racist. And you should but that doesn't mean that you're not affected by racism. And I said it this way to somebody who was really mad at me for saying it, so I'll just tell you up front, if you get mad, I'm okay with that. If you benefit from racism, you're a racist. If you benefit from sexism, you're a sexist. You don't have to stay stuck there. You can do the work to become anti-sexist and anti-racist and anti-colonialism. You can do the work. But if you do not do the work and you continue to benefit and pretend like you don't, then that tag is yours. Sit with it, be uncomfortable with it, 
wrestle with it. I'm going to offer something else to you as a gift. You may never call yourself an ally. Someone to whom you've been an ally must identify you as such. I want you to get that. Because we run around, I'm an ally. Who told you that? Who told you that you were doing something that I like? And, you know, and I said this before, and it was upsetting for people, but, you know, during the whole Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter thing, there was lots of signs. There are churches that go out there every week and walk around with their Black Lives Matter signs. And then when black people walk by them, they don't even meet their eyes. They don't say hello. They don't greet them. Some of them might even clutch their purses and lock their doors. I'm telling you that because I need you to know That the dissonance between who we say we are and who we live like we are hurts people. It causes mistrust. Often in churches that are largely white, people say, we really want more people of color. We should have a meeting. We should have a, a group, a subgroup. We're going to go ahead and have a, a council about it and a whole agenda to get more people of color. And then when people of color come, God help me, God help me. When people of color come, you, 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 you treat them like they're some special snowflake and not a human being because they make you look good. Amen? They colorize your otherwise white population and they make you feel good about yourself. I don't want you to hurt yourself patting yourself on the back. Because if you've not built a relationship, what have you done? What have you done if you've not taken the time to build a relationship? One of the churches I worked at said, we've been working on this for years. And I said, well, you've got 200 years of mistrust to overcome. So how long do you think it's going to take? When people come to you and they, don't, they aren't warm and friendly with you, it's not because they don't like you. It's not because they don't like what you're wearing or your cologne or even your theology. It's because their entire lives have given them reasons to mistrust you. You have to give them reasons to engage in a little bit of trust. And that comes from being vulnerable, from taking the time to build relationship. It comes from wandering in their wilderness and being tempted by your own privilege. I know I'm going somewhere here, and you may not make the journey with me, but I want you to get this. In this 40 days of fulfillment and power in our wildernesses, our temptation is our own privilege. Our desire not to see our privilege. Our desire to say, I march with Dr. King, so I no longer have a racism problem. Perhaps, perhaps not. I have known people in, oh, I'm, I know this is just going to be upsetting to people. I've known people in multiracial relationships that thought that they got to be black by affiliation, black by relationship that their white privilege no longer applied to them. That's a hurtful place to be for the black partner in that, when you can't tell your partner how you really feel for fear that you will hurt their feelings. I don't tell you a lot of things in this church because I don't want to hurt your feelings. Every now and again, I put that aside and I tell you what I see in the world when I walk through the world. I don't tell you this to make you feel bad. I tell you this because I want you to live into the thing that you said you wanted to live into. When we were coming together and I was asking you, do you want me to be your pastor? And you were saying, do you want to be our pastor? One of the things you said to me is, we're ready. We're ready to really be open, to look at our whiteness, to look at our classism, to look at our situations of privilege and say, let's be different together. Every now and again, I want to remind you of that commitment because being different doesn't mean that we all hold hands and sing sanctuary. It means that we look at the surroundings of our wilderness and we pray, we fast from harsh judgment and harsh self-judgment, and we trust that the angels of God will cover us and guide us. I'm going to leave you with this. 
in our wildernesses. God does not abandon us. But in our wildernesses, there is beauty. Standing alone in silence and need and hunger, squinting to see the invisible angels that are surrounding us in that heated embrace between famine, fear, and faith. This is where God is nearest to us. This is not a tidy ending. It is an open question of truth and trust. What is it in your wilderness that's waiting to be born this season, this Lent, in your personal wilderness? What is just outside of your reach when you stay stuck in the comfortable places where everything feels good and you feel good about you. Look at you. Go, righteous ally. I pray that you remember your own experiences of vulnerability, fragility, need, and uncertainty. Stand in that memory place with your eyes closed and your heart open and listen for the angels. Be still enough to try to feel the breath of the spirit on your neck. And know more than any other thing that in your wilderness, God is with you always. No matter how easy it is, no matter how hard it feels, no matter how much you want to love your neighbor but you really can't stand them and you can't figure out the difference between like and love, even in those moments, even in those moments of deep shame, because you said the wrong thing, you used the wrong pronoun, you said colored instead of black, even in those moments when you want to run and hide, God is working in your wilderness, just like a seed underneath rich soil needs that darkness to grow to fruition and burst forth, to bloom. We need our wilderness. Intentional wilderness, time and space to let God and the angels minister to us and move us to the next place. Amen. Yeah.
man. I love how they do the music and I do the sermon and we don't actually talk, but it all comes together. Please be seated. <laughs> it is that Sunday where I want to invite those of you who have been journeying with us for a while and are ready to stop dating and step up to the altar to join us in membership in this church. I also want to invite those of you that have been church burned and told that God doesn't love you, I want to invite you into a deeper relationship, not with religion, but with God. If you are interested and in wanting to be a part of this church that you have found your spiritual family here, I invite you to raise your hand or stand where you are and let us know that you would like to be a part of us. Amen. Amen. We know you, but we, we're going to have you introduce yourself anyway, even though we know you already. <laughs> Amen. My name is Marcus Carnes. My boyfriend and I, Brandon, moved here from Nashville a few months ago, and we've just loved how open and welcoming everyone has been here to us, so we would love to call this place our home. Amen. Amen. I agree. I, you know, I don't, I get emotional, so just excuse me. Um, you know, it's, we came from Nashville where it's just very conservative, very judgmental. So to find a place where we can truly just feel like ourselves yes. is one of the greatest gifts that we could have here. So We are so happy to have you with us. You are welcome here. We, we, we're going to put your hands and hearts to work and in, integrate you into the fabric of, fabric of us. We have been waiting and praying for you. So we're glad you're here. Anyone else? Yes, amen. 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 I'm Ames, and this is Silky. And um, I knew I was home when I got here. And um, I'm just grateful for a place where I'm completely welcome. Amen. And where I could bring absolutely anyone in the world, and they'd be at home too. Amen. So thank you for welcoming us. And... Um, we both love it here. Thank you for joining us. We are so thrilled to have both of you be a part of us here. Anyone else? I don't want anybody to feel left out. OK. OK. Oh, you're going to stay? Dax is reaffirmed. I'm going to tell you why I do this. And I, I know we're going over a little bit, and you'll be all right. <laughs> or I'm sorry, either, whichever one works best for you. Um, you know, throughout the UCC, um, membership is done like signing up for health insurance once a year. I don't like that. I like to make room for the move of the spirit on a monthly basis. If you have a desire to be a part of us, I don't need you to wait a year. Let us know. We don't need you to be shopping around forever. If, you, if this is your place, let's get busy in being in relationship with one another. Welcome to you all. So very grateful to God for you. Being with us, I expect that our journey together will be beautiful. I invited everyone last week, and I will invite you uh, through to Good Friday, through to Monday, Thursday, to put your prayer requests in with your offerings when we pass the basket, and I will pray for your prayer requests during the week. I also want to invite each of you who is a praying person or who would like to become one to take your order of worship home and pray for the people on our prayer list. Prayer matters. Prayer is powerful. And corporate prayer, that being the body praying together, has exponentially more power than the individual prayers. I, I don't have, I'm not like, you know, Manhattan Transfer where I can, you know, that song Operator. I don't have that, you know, I can't dial a number and go, hey, God, Lewis here, what's up? I don't have that any more than you do. Amen. I know you think that sometimes, you know, the diaconate or, or clergy, we have a special pipeline. We might be more familiar with our pipeline, but it's not special. You have your own. Utilize it. Ask God for what you need. Ask God to take away that which you no longer want to be burdened by. 
Build your relationship with God. And I know I'm going to be in trouble somewhere. I would love for you to be a part of this church and this denomination, but more importantly than that, I want you to have a relationship with divine energy. Divine energy is bigger than any church, any denomination, any practice. God is with us and in us and for us. I invite you now to incline your hearts in prayer with me. Today we're going to do a version of the Lord's Prayer. I want to ask you to do it slowly and thoughtfully. Think about the words, chew on them a little bit, savor them a little bit. This is a covenant and a commitment that we're making in prayer. Our Creator, who is in all things, above us, below us, within us, all around us. We lift up your many names with praise and reverence. May we bring the kingdom of love and service to this place as we imagine it to be in heaven. Give us gratitude for this breath, this day. We thank you for your daily provision. Forgive us for those we have harmed, intentionally or not. Give us a heart of forgiveness for those who have harmed us, intentionally or not. Give us sight to see temptation and the discernment to turn away. Direct us from the evil in our midst and in our hearts. This kingdom is yours, and tending it is our responsibility. All power is yours, and any that we hold comes from you. Glory is yours, and any that we claim is residual to our relationship with you. Your eternal spirit lives on forever in us and beyond us, for which we are thankful. Amen. I love you, Rincon. I love you for the opportunities you give. We met on Friday night at uh, Creating Belonging with Reverend Tyler Connolly about how to live into the land acknowledgement more. And one of the things that we have purpose to do in creating belonging is that we are going to start do working on our own land histories, examining uh, the ownership in our histories of land and who owned the land before that and who owned the land before that. And then we're going to research the history of our land here who owned it before us, who owned it before us, who owned it before them, as far back as we can go. And what are the stories around all of that? How did this come to be what was happening at the time? We're hoping that that will point us in the direction of how do we live an amended life with land and with the indigenous people that were here before us. So if you'd like to join us in that, please let us know. You can let me know. You can let Karen know. You can let Dave Buss know. You can really let any of us know. We'd love to have you join us with that. That's a little bit of the work that we do at RENCON. And that's a little bit of what you're supporting whenever you're uh, giving generously. On the back of your bulletin is what Lent is about. So I just invite you to read that. And there's a part of service here. And this is our opportunity to offer a little bit con of contribution towards that service. So I invite you to do so now.
Please join me in blessing our offerings. Loving God, thank you so much for the opportunity to be generous. Pray that you'll bless every single person in this place as we leave here. Pray that you'll bless these gifts and give us the wisdom and how to use them. In your loving name we pray, amen. amen. And before I forget, because I forgot almost again, we are having choir practice after service today. I forgot to mention that uh, before because we're singing next week. So we're having Amen. choirs singing next week. Amen. Got a wonderful song lined up. So uh, even if you can't make it to, uh, after service today, we will be meeting at 9 a.m. before service next week, and we'll be going over it. So if you have the desire at all, I just would love to do a little bit of singing. Uh, we're going to be doing that. And if you're interested in uh, being on my uh, emailing list, um, for uh, notifications of when we're doing that, uh, my uh, email is in the back of the bulletin, and you can get in touch with me that way. So we love it. No formal training needed, you know. So good. Please stand if you're able, body or spirit, and help me sing our final hymn today. Franciscan benediction, but before I do, you long timers or short timers, I want to remind you to just take an extra moment to greet our guests and our new members before you head out the door today. Amen? Amen. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, have truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. 
Amen.